Okay, August 31st. 2023 so I planted crabgrass in this field this was a mainly orchard grass field that burned right up this spring didn't hardly produce anything from the drought so I came in I put some Red River crabgrass I dissed the ground was so hard my disc would only go in the ground like just scratch it so I scratched the hell out of it here's the crabgrass I haven't had a chance to get in here and cut it you can get two cuttings off it if you get it early enough but um, uh, so it is an annual if it goes to seed supposedly it's supposed to reseed for next year if you disturb the soil in the spring and then a lot of this uh, foxtail came in that just came in volunteer so that makes this is that giant foxtail so that'll make great forage and uh, You'll get it cut before this foxtail that turns color pretty quick um you know and i we got some real hot weather and this luckily dries a lot better than the sedan grass that i attempted to cut for baling but here's uh here's what that crab grass looks like up close it's pretty leafy and got a lot of leaves on it and i've baled it before it's come up volunteering a new seeding, like following soybean stubble. You know, especially in dry years, it might be the only forage you have. And they, uh, cattle and horses, love it. I had an alpaca lady told me she loved it. Ordered the seed out of Oklahoma. And the guy said he has shipped seed to Michigan before. So somebody else, somebody in Michigan's been growing it. And we'll see. So look at the forage out here though. I mean, we're talking we're pretty high, pretty high. You know? So green and leafy, be nice. This will be cattle feed, high quality cattle feed, I'm hoping. Cutting at the old Warner farm. This is a Centennial farm. What's left of it over here in Brighton, still owned by a member of the Warner family. They settled here in the 1830s. So all that, well, all that's left of the whole farm is 12 acres. <laughs> Old schoolhouse that's been restored that was moved here. Kind of cool. So quite a bit of it has lodged. That just happened uh, the last set of storms we had. Typically in this field would produce 
the thickest orchard grass, and the areas that typically produce the thinnest stuff had the thickest crabgrass and foxtail. And I had a couple of real unsuccessful plantings in this field, so I thought, let me try a summer annual. And apparently the summer annual wants to grow here. I, I may just redo this next year in this field. I mean, why not? Look at this cottage. I really couldn't get anything else to grow very good in this field. A couple of these spots I'm going to go back into, uh, into the wind. Recut them, otherwise I'm going to have a hell of a time raking some of this stuff. And baling it. Well, I don't have it baled yet, obviously, but so far, you know, this is a pretty good success as far as crop establishment. You know, I'm going to start doing this on these low quality fields that, for whatever reason, I can't get a good crop of alfalfa or anything or high yielding grass, perennial grass established. I mean, the idea, the object here is to get some forage volume. And, uh, you know, I've got it. Um, I mean, the foxtail came in heavy in some parts of this. And, you know, the crabgrass is in here. It's hard to tell. But um, you get a lot of yield with that foxtail. It makes great forage. I actually was trying to find a meadow foxtail or something to plant but I couldn't. This crabgrass hay is very, very leafy here. So some parts of the field are pretty short and others are just, especially where the foxtail is, are just outstanding. So um, there's a guy in Wisconsin I saw on YouTube that, you know, basically lets this go to seed and disturbs the ground every spring and it'll regrow i don't know i guess the seed i'm trying to see if the seed is ripe it does look like some of the seed has came off the seed heads so it's probably you know i guess it it produces tiny seed this is nine acres in one bag planted all of this it's like a three to five pound seeding rate. So we'll just see about getting it dry. Does look like I got some stem conditioning. So right now I've got 30 acres of second cutting clover, about four acres of second cutting orchard grass, about 10 acres of first cut trefoil down, and then this nine acres. Then I can get going on the bulk of my first cutting that still needs to be done. Really get going on some, it's one area I've got close to 100 acres in the vicinity. And I wanna to try to finish that before it gets shut down from the weather. <laughs> 